Afternoon all, I hope you're well. I thought on this cold old day I'd do something a bit more practical indoors. Well, today I'm just gonna show you how to rig a gill net. Obviously, that all depends on the mesh sizes and the hanging ratio, how far apart you do the knots. But if that ain't right, you might as well chuck the net in the bin most of the time. You gotta have your nets hanging right to catch fish. Well, this net here, is 100 mil meshes. That's ideal for things like bass, sea trout, and mullet, that sort of thing. Obviously, different parts of the countries you get different species, but also you can catch Dover sole in it and that sort of thing, and dabs. It all depends if you have them big for surface or bottom fishing. Obviously, surface nets, you float and drift with them, a drifting net, or you anchor them to the bottom and then that's a set net it all depends what you want to do with it depending on what species you want to catch well to me once you measure your net that's obviously the there's a knot there and it come down knot there knot there come up so that's one full mesh but if you stretch it so there's no gap and measure it between that knot and that knot, so it's a full mesh, these will be a hundred millimeters. Obviously, I've shown it open so you can see it for visual purposes, but in theory, that'll be like that. Totally closed between that knot and that knot will be a hundred millimeters. But obviously you can't fish it like that because well no fish can swim the eels, can they? <laughs> Simple as that. Well, most nets this sort of size are anchored up on the bottom, obviously after bass, dogfish, soles, anything like that sort of thing. And most of the time you have a hanging ratio of half. So obviously you open the net that way because that will measure 100 mil from there to there also. So that's just what you've got to do. You've got to work out how far apart to rig it so you want the meshes the correct size. Well, most nets are rigged by a half. So that means that gap across there, obviously stretched is a hundred mil, but this way you want it rigged by a half, so that's 50 mil. That means it's half the stretch length. That gives you a good hanging ratio. So the net's slack enough so you don't bounce off and they, the fish will tangle up well. Most drift or anchored tangle nets are all rigged by a half, but some nets, like heron nets, we rig differently. Instead of rigging them to a half across there, so it's only 50%, we actually rig heron nets to two thirds, so it's basically 66%. So that hold it open, because heron a bit well, they're a bit daft, didn't they? Heron and pilchard sardines are a bit daft and they tangle ever so easy because the mesh size is very close to their head size and their gill size. So heron and pilchard nets, you rig by a third or two to two thirds and things like bass, sole, mullet, all that sort of thing, you rig them by a half. Well, this is a net I'll partially rigged I've done the top rope, the float line, and I'll put the lead line on it. I just haven't put the gills on it yet. But now we talk about how far apart do you do the knots. Well, as you can see here, one, two, three, four, five meshes. I like to do mine five meshes apart, because if I'm rigging them for sunk nets or surface nets for drifting, obviously we use floats. And we don't want them going through and getting tangled. This is an example of a net float we use when we have sunk nets. And obviously, if them knots are too far apart, that can easily get through there and tangle. But we don't want to do that. So I always rig nearly all my nets only five meshes apart. A lot of people rig them ten. But I don't want that because obviously I don't want these net floats to go through and tangle. 
That'll probably be easier to explain the drawn. If you imagine that's the seaved. And that's the surface of the water. Obviously, you've got three main kinds of gill nets for this sort of thing, or tangle nets. You've got surface nets, where you have your top rope and floats on the surface, and they hang down. With your lead line on the bottom, so they fish the surface. You'd also get sunk nets, what are basically sunk surface nets. So that's the surface. You don't put so much flutes on, so they sink below the surface. That's the top boot, that's a lead line. Then you put a strop, depending on how you want, with a flute on it. Every now and then, so that flute on the surface. Well, that's a, that's a sunk net. Obviously, how deep it fish all depends on the strop lengths. So that's what I'm saying, I put these flutes these flutes are them flutes so that's why when you put them every knot i put five meshes apart because if not this if you imagine on there when you shoot them that flute can go through there and tangle net up so it'll lift the net up and you don't want that you want your nets to be level in the water and not tangled up so that's why i only rig them every five meshes so the gaps are obviously a lot smaller and the last sort of net you get is a bottom net. Well, the lead line is on the bottom. Then you've got your fluke line. So they just basically fish on the bottom. You put very little flutes on them. Normally, you space them well, well apart. On the boost surface nets, I put them flutes about a yard or a metre apart. On sunk nets, I put them little flutes every 20 foot apart, and also the strops 20 foot apart. So that's little flute, 10 foot strop, another 10 foot little flute, another 10 foot a strop. That's pretty simple, really. Well, I'll now show you how far apart to put them. Well, obviously, that's your top rope. And obviously, you want your your meshes are here. So you've got five meshes. Well, if you pull that tight, this is on a 100 mil mesh. If you pull this net tight and measure it across each one, that'll be 100 mil. So five times 100 is obviously 500 mil. Because you want a hang, hang and ratio of half, you get 500 times 0.5 equal 250 mil. So what you do, you come with your twine, tie a knot, go through five meshes and come up, and you have them knots 250 mil apart. So you, that's mean you then rug it by a half because you got. 500 mil of stretch mesh in a 250 mil gap. So that's rigging it by a half. Well, I just explained how to work it out. When, you, when you're rigging nets by a half, what you mainly do for bigger fish, sort of bass or mullet, soles, that sort of thing, whether you're doing surface nets or bottom nets, you normally do it by a half. But when we use heron nets, heron nets and pilchard nets, they only rig by a third or the opposite, two thirds of their stretch mesh. So if you look at this, obviously, well a heron net is 55 mil stretch mesh. So that from there to there is 55 mil. And we rig them by a third. So obviously, instead of being stretched 55 mil, that then come back a bit. So to work out on that, you think 55 mil 
times five, so that's five meshes apart. That comes to 275 mil. So we, because you've got to do it by a third, reduce it by a third, 275 mil times 0.66, or basically two thirds. That then gives you a size of 181.5 roughly. So obviously on heron nets and pilted nets, you put five meshes in a gap of 181.5 millimeters. Easy peasy, you know. I'm just going on how I rig nets and how I've been taught and how I've always rigged them. But everyone has got, like everything, everyone's got a slightly different opinion what they prefer, what they like. So not everyone will say the same thing. Some people might want a slacker ratio. Because some tangle nets, what you fish on the bottom, like this, when you, you've got lead line on the bottom like that, some people will reduce them, rig them to a third. So basically, it was a 100 mil mesh, obviously stretched, that's 100 mil, they'll put, they'll reduce it to a third. So instead of a 100, that's only 33.3 mil wide. So obviously you get a lot more meshes, the meshes are squashed in more. Generally, the more pushed in the lint, or the meshes, the better they'll fish and they'll tangle well. But you do reduce the length of the overall net because a lot of nets are bought in 200 meter sheets. If you reduce it by a half, the whole net will end up 100 meters long. But obviously if you reduce it or increase it, that alter your mesh. But most people rig nets by a half, so a 100 meter sheet or 200 meter sheet will make a 100 yard net. That's how a lot of people do it. So we've obviously us rigging it by a half, you need to get the half of the stretch length, so a 200 yard sheet make a 100 yard net. Obviously, you do it by you rig it to a third. That hundred yard sheet or two hundred yard sheet, then that's only sixty six point six yards long. So you then lost a th another third of your net. So your two hundred yard sheet is now only sixty six point six six point seven yards long. So you lose fishing distance. But if you rig gear around a half. You're pretty much there really that's what a majority of people do you do get a few more fishing nets what are rigged to a third but most people don't really well that's just a little bit of theory about rigging nets gill nets tangle nets and that sort of thing hope you learned something by it because to be honest with it many people that rig their own nets anymore a lot of it is rug on machines and that sort of thing and but i always prefer to rig my own really because i get exactly what i want spot on hanging ratios and i've always done it but as a as a dying art now there's not many people that rig their own nets and give it another 10 15 20 years there won't be anyone really what rig nets so it's a bit of a dying breed a bit like fishermen really in the uk give it another 10 15 years 90% of the fishermen will be retired or packed in. So these sort of arts are things that are disappearing. Well, hope you enjoy watching it all. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.